we were the country who fled the world's greatest superpower one century mm -hmm. only to become the world's greatest superpower the next century. That's never happened to that degree. And that's because we were a country founded on the idea of private citizens being able to own firearms. We fought off a tyrannical government. We didn't submit to them. What do you believe the Second Amendment is? I think it's the right to defend ourselves. Okay. Right? Uh, Self-defense. Um, in the case of, uh, you know, in the case of a need of self-defense, right? But mass shootings, those aren't self-defense. Well, no, but that's that's a crime, right? Mass shootings. Right. I'm saying, but before we get into that's that's a crime, and we both agree. Listen, none, none of us, no one here is advocating for mass shootings. I want right. to make sure that we agree on that. And I appreciate you sitting down and keeping it civil. We've had people just come by and scream and knock the camera. So <laughs> I, I want to make sure you understand. Yeah. I am very anti mass no, 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 shooting of or criminal behavior. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but you said the Second Amendment is for defense. I think we need to fundamentally uh, find out where we agree first before then right. we determine where we disagree. Okay. So the Second Amendment, you believe, is, is, is for defense, but how so? Defense against what? Attackers. Um, I believe I was, I was talking to some people out there and they said that like in case the government goes against you, you can use um, guns as a, like, a self-defense as well. So, and was that the first time you'd heard that concept? Mm -hmm. So you'd, you'd never heard before about the Second Amendment being a safeguard against a tyrannical government? Yeah. Okay. That's why it was written. Right. Uh, that's, that's, that's the whole purpose for it. So um, with that context, you have to understand at that point they were basically uh, ensuring, just like the First Amendment, your freedom of speech. Remember, you can run off right now and say, I hate him, he was mean, he's terrible, and you have the right to say it. I mm -hmm. would prefer that you didn't. Uh, <laughs> but the Constitution says you have that right. The Constitution also ensured that the citizens had the right to arm themselves um, by the way, the same kind of armaments that the, the, the military had at that point. Um, that's what it was for. It was for protection against both internal and external threats. Government, right. and of course, to protect your, your farm, your family, your property. Mm -hmm. That's why it exists. So, that's what the Second Amendment ensures. Okay. Um, I guess since that was the first time you've you'd heard that, but uh, can we, I guess, agree on that as a starting off point? I suppose. I think my only issue with it is that there's like a, a very... A very like it's a culture like defense of guns and having guns is a very American culture like why isn't this a problem in say Australia where um, they had enacted a gun ban a ban on assault rifles I believe and then they administered a buyback program where over 650,000 uh, guns were bought back and their homicide rates and suicide rates by gun violence dropped significantly a okay. couple of things I'd like to unpack there uh, two things you said, why do we have this culture in the United States? Right. Now, I'll acknowledge, for example, where I'm from in Canada, it's different than the United States. Mm -hmm. So why is there a gun culture in the United States? Um, because you have other societies who kneel for royalty, who didn't fight off a tyrannical government. We left, and in order to make sure that you're free to practice your religion, in order to make sure that you're free to speak. By the way, that's also not a right in Australia or Canada. Freedom of speech doesn't exist anywhere else outside of the United States. Not to its full capacity. A lot of people don't realize that. They go hand in hand. We were the country who fled the world's greatest superpower one century mm -hmm. only to become the world's greatest superpower the next century. That's never happened to that degree. And that's because we were a country founded on the idea of private citizens being able to own firearms. We fought off a tyrannical government. We didn't submit to them. So that will change the culture, just as you see a different culture in Japan versus Germany, right? There are cultural differences. Mm -hmm. When you're a culture born through violence, and I would say virtuous violence, um, I mean, I would say it certainly was virtuous violence to fight a war to end slavery. When we agree, you can commit acts of violence that are morally virtuous, and you can commit acts of peace that are morally reprehensible. Right. You can peacefully sign a warrant for millions of people to die, and that has happened. Mm -hmm. So that is why. There's a fundamental mistrust of government. We fought off a government and we wanted to ensure that we would be able to do that in the future. Because George Washington, um, actually George Mason said, who is the militia, which is in the Second Amendment, he said, why, it's, it's the whole people. George Washington fought off militias. You know, there are all kinds of warring militias in this country. Right. Was the easiest thing he could have done would have been, all right, ban guns, no more militias. George Washington didn't. You know why? Because he said, I need them to keep us in check. Our founding fathers understood since they had just fled and fought off tyranny that it can happen within one generation. It can happen within less than a decade. So that's why it's ingrained into our culture. It's a different culture. Um, you may not agree with it, but that's why the Second Amendment exists. Does that answer maybe your question as to why it's culturally different? 
like right but i believe maybe the culture was different back then like the context is different now okay well let's let's get to that because i wanted to get to your second issue you mentioned australia mm -hmm. uh so you mentioned a buyback buyback program it was a mandatory buyback mm -hmm. yeah so it's a gun ban um, it's interesting to me that then you said, well, and then gun suicides and gun crime went down. Or guns by, by uh, gun-related suicides and gun-related uh, homicides. Okay. But they didn't completely ban guns because they did, um, I think if I'm not mistaken, they did enact uh, a new permit system. Right, but it's a right. mandatory buyback. Right. You could say it's like if, if I put a ban on all epauletted black coats right now and it's a mandatory buyback where you have to turn that in or I'm going to send government men with guns, by the way, ironically, to your house to take your jacket. Mm -hmm. It's a ban, right? Right. You don't have a choice in the matter. Then you can say afterward, well, we're going to make you get this tax stamp and we're going to make you go through this process and you can get your, your pretty black jacket back. You wouldn't say... Oh, okay. That's 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 a real respect for my rights, there, Mr. Government. I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's pretty pretty rough. So it was a mandatory buyback. Then you mentioned that there was a decrease in uh, gun harm, homicides, and suicides. First off, there is conflicting data there that it didn't affect I gun crime at that. all. Yeah. But there's certainly no conflicting data that it did not affect violent crime. So uh, the question becomes. If someone kills himself with a gun or if someone kills himself with a knife, um, you're 19 times, for example, more likely to be knifed. Uh, my concern is with violent crime, it's not necessarily a gun. And it shows you that it doesn't matter what you do with guns, violent crime remains unchanged. Right. Now, what does change? That, for example, in the United States, is that there are far more defensive uses of firearms uh, that save far, far more lives than they take. So uh, the question becomes, I think because you're, you're, you're empathetic, um, you're kind of, I, I don't say this, I don't want to be arrogant, I think you're learning some historical context for the Second Amendment, hopefully. Uh, and I would encourage you to go read it. Don't take my word yeah, for no, it. Yeah, no, seriously. Like LeVar Burton. Don't take my word for it. Mm -hmm. Don't you hate it when he does that and reading Rainbow and then some <laughs> six-year-old that's like, oh, I'm supposed to take a six-year-old's recommendation? Yeah. <laughs> so don't take my word for it. So then it, that, now it comes back to the issue. If it didn't necessarily work, um, understanding why we have the Second Amendment now, are you still comfortable with stripping people of their rights to protect themselves? I don't think that's the issue with like, I think, I guess like, yeah, talking to you, it boils down to like this really intense culture around guns and having them and like the context has changed now. So we're not as afraid of our government turning on us anymore as you, as we were, we're more afraid of mass shootings and people turning on each other. I see. I think that's very, that's very misguided. Why? You, you, you're more afraid of a mass shooting than um, government overreach. Yes, I suppose so. You mean by government overreaches in government takes over? Infringing upon your rights, yeah, tyrannical government. Um, I think, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 18. 18. Oh, really? Okay, 18. Well, there you go. You're a very sharp uh, young lady at 18. Um, very well spoken. Uh, you just haven't lived through it. It doesn't take a lot. I mean, you understand that can happen very quickly. It's still happening across the world right now. Right. Tyrannical governments. I mean, you can see how quickly a government can change. Look at Turkey. Right. right? Look, look at Iran in the 70s and Iran today. I mean, rights are removed like that, like clockwork. You see it with Australia, a gun buyback, a mandatory gun buyback. These people were obeying the law one second, and then were fugitives from the law the next because someone decides to change a law. This happens all the time, and in the realm of human history, uh, major global conflicts, it's not that long ago. But I mean... Um, and the only way to... We're the only country to say, hey, we recognize the human condition. Right. We recognize that human beings are inherently capable of evil and corrupt, uh, b being corrupted, so let's safeguard against that and make sure that every individual has the right to protect themselves, because that's the fundamental worldview, right? Right. Is, uh, do you believe that good people have the right to protect themselves against bad people, whether that's government or a gang member? Well, um, that's that can, uh, too hard to think about, to be honest. Like, I think that argument that um, the only thing that... Um, stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. I think that's a little bit shaky to think about just Why? because um, that doesn't make much sense to me. You can't always, uh, I don't know, I just don't, I think that argument isn't as valid as it could be. I had I had some stats in my head, but I forgot. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I, I haven't These cameras seen. do that to you. Um, <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. If I were able to provide you with irrefutable evidence that that is true, as well as anecdotal evidence, would you consider changing your opinion? I suppose, but I would have to depend. It would depend on the source as okay. well. Okay. All right. Let me let me give you the information in the source, and I would encourage you to Google it afterwards. Um, how many guns do you believe in the United States? Sorry, how many lives do you believe are taken by guns in the United States each year? You're going to say three thousand, three hundred thousand, aren't you? No. No. 
No, how many lives? No, no, no. Really? No, that's, that's way too high. Really? Yeah. Wait, okay. Lives <laughs> taken by guns. I'm not sure. I can't uh, approximate. If you include suicide, it's in the 30. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. Yeah. It's, Sorry. Take it. Multiply it by I was ten. But, listening a lot. So. Uh, and then uh, it's uh, if you take away suicide, it's in anywhere from twelve thousand to sixteen thousand, okay. depending which source you use. Now, how many uh, lives? How many people are saved each year in the United States through defensive uses of firearms? I'm not sure. Are you gonna? Yes. Wait. Would you repeat your question, please? How, how many defensive uses of firearms would you say occur in the United States? Meaning lives saved people safe, protected through legal defensive use of firearms each year. So we've just established about, you know, twelve to sixteen thousand excluding suicide lives are taken. Oh, okay. But how many are saved? I'm not sure. Minimum five hundred thousand. Really? Likely over three million each year, according to the C D C. Okay. So I'd say that's a legitimate source, right? It's not CNN, this is the CDC, uh, a National Safety Council. So you're talking exponentially higher numbers of people whose lives are saved through defensive use of firearms than lives are ever taken. Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.